We feed our kids love. I have no problem telling each and every one of my students that I love them. We feed them that every day. We didn't get to see our kids until June 8th, okay? We stopped seeing them in March. What was feeding our kids at that time? Minneapolis today. Many are reeling tonight from the death of George Floyd. I can breathe. No justice! No justice! They executed my brother in broad daylight. That's when the violence protest became a riot. You can see the smoke bombs in the distance. When is it really going to change? When is it really going to stop? I think it was the second week of SAC camp and Coach Glenn has sent out a message to everybody saying that we will be talking about this. Well, Austin had attention. He's in the middle talking to us. It's cameras on him. I wanted to make sure before we lifted a weight, before we ran, before we did anything, our athletes understood no matter what they tried to feed you, no matter what they try to tell you, or no matter what they want to make you believe, we're not going to have racial issues here at Clown Oak. Sometimes it's easier just to not say anything about a tough topic. And to go out there and in front of your whole football program, be that open and that outspoken about something, it shows a lot of character. And it shows a lot of determination to push towards the right thing. I was hurt. I was truly, absolutely hurting for our kids uh, and, and our country. I was, I was hurting. Um, it was like an out-of-body experience. I just couldn't stop speaking and talking about it. That speech Coach Glenn gave us, it was all over social media, blowing up. Everybody reposting it, talking about how, how good it was and how they needed that. What he's gonna tell you is what he believes, and he's really authentic like that and I think it's what makes him so um, engaging in it. And you want to support him and follow him and play for him or him on your campus is because he, um, he's, he's honest. When you capture authenticity, that's what makes it so powerful. And I think that's what they captured there that day. Attention on the whistle. I'm buckling on the whistle. Right knee on the whistle. Hammer throw up on the whistle. Mask up on the whistle. Here we go. Bow your head. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to tell you thank you. Thank you for this morning rising. I want to thank you for these young men and putting us in position to guide them into being better great men. Being great men. Not just great football players, but great men. I want to thank you for the coaches. Klein Oak is 56% uh, white. Uh, it is 20% Hispanic, you know, 15% African American. Sports is the one thing to where you can actually have different races, different cultures, and different types of backgrounds come together for one common goal. Hey, LBs on me, LBs on three. One, two, three, LBs. Everybody's come from hard backgrounds. Personally, I have. I lost my father at a pretty young age, and the team can be a rock for you. It can be that foundation. And that's why I, I'm really grateful for Klein Oak, about the coaches and the community and the culture that they started to build. We really stressed the unity, and that's one thing in the speech that he had. It really showed that we're all collectively together and we're not against each other. We uniquely put our lockers next to different kids with different backgrounds. We put them together just so they could start to understand each other. So we put the kids that whose parents make a million with the kids whose parents barely making it living check by check. So we did that and it actually got our kids to get closer. Yeah.
You know, if the world was like a locker room, we wouldn't have as many issues as I believe we have today. Good. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How you doing, Chance? Good morning. Good. How's yours? Which morning? Hey, that's gonna be funny till you get married, Chance. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Have a good day, Chance. How you feeling? You good? You need anything? Okay. All right. Tell your mom and dad I said what's up, man. Good deal. Good morning. How are you doing? Outstanding. Hey, Coach Calhoun. This is Coach Jason Glenn from Klein Oak uh, High School, head football coach. Well, my environment where I grew up was very, um, I believe, unorthodox. And I grew up with a big family, big, big family. I'm number 10 out of 11 kids. Uh, like I said, there's no half, no steps, all from the same parents. Um, so we had our own football team, if you can say. But I grew up in a, a neighborhood that was very tough. Uh, I seen some things that I shouldn't have seen at my age. It let me know, you know, what, what I need to do to make sure my kids uh, don't see the same things that I see. Just calling you, uh, I have a couple of kids, man, that is interested in uh, your program. Uh, we have a great, great set of kids. That... I wanted to be a coach uh, because of my high school coach, Bernie Simon. Um, the way he led, the way he, <laughs> the way he helped so many kids like myself and a lot of my friends uh, to see that, hey, just because you grew up in this area doesn't mean that you have to go back to it. There's another uh, life outside of your neighborhood and he has helped us a whole bunch and so many kids. And I'm like, you know what? I think that's my passion. I, I wanna find a way to help kids. All right, hope to hear from you soon, bye. First of all, how's everything at home? Is it better? Yes, it's better. That's good, man. That's, that's awesome. That's the first thing I, I care about that just as much as, uh, as you know, football. Play with Coach Glenn, it's like I'm like closer to him than I would with any other coach. He's there for me like any time I need it. And he, like with other coaches, I wasn't, it wasn't like that at all. And with him, I'm just like I'm grateful that I have him be the one that's there for me and everybody else. I can't say I care about kids when I just care about them at school. I get personal with my kids and their families. I want to know, I don't, I don't want to just be your coach. I want to be something more than your coach. That's what we need to do as coaches, not just teaching them how to run plays and tell them how to be men here at school. You need to dig deep into what's going on at home. It also helped me understand my kids a lot more. If I know your background at home, I will know how to treat you. I will treat everybody fair, but I won't treat you the same. I learned that from Herm Edwards. Ball is not life, because ball is temporary. Is your life temporary? No. And when it ends, what's your next step? And more importantly, what type of man are you when it ends? I was, a, I was kind of a bad child, you know, getting in trouble every day. But when I started talking to Coach Glenn, it changed a lot. Because before that, in middle school, I wasn't thinking about, like, really nothing at all in my future. A football player is great until it's taken away from him. But a great man, you can't take that away from him. You can't. You can't take because you control what type of man you are. I, I think if I was at another school, it, I don't think a head coach would really do that. But Coach Glenn, he, he cares a lot. You good? All right, baby. Get all right, man. Go to class. All right. Love you. Love you too. Uh, it is. 11. When Coach Glenn tells me that he loves me, I believe him. Like, I don't tell a lot of people I love them just because the way it feels when I say it, it doesn't feel right. But when you say it to a person that you, you know and that's been there, it's like you, you really you feel that love towards them. It means a lot to be able to tell a coach I love him. And it even means more to have a coach say I love you back. Um, it's really hard to put into kind of words, uh, but it's just this feeling that he's there for me and I'm going to be there for him. Because when adversity hits, I mean, you can tell someone I love you, but you might not mean it. We can mean it, 
because we fight through it together to where we can persevere and still love each other. And that's one thing that I just think is great about here. And that's why I just love it here. I really do. Hey, everybody up right quick. Everybody up. I remember when I first met you, when you walked in with your mom, when you was incoming freshman. I remember when you was in the fifth grade, working out with your older brothers at SAC camp, on the bench press, doing tens on both sides when you weren't supposed to. I remember shaking your hand right after the first practice, and I told the coaches, God dang, that man got some big hands. Remember when you were deciding at Chick-fil-A, when I got that special call. I can name and go through every single senior that we had here because y'all mean something to us. Notice, I'm barely talking about the game of football right now. Because at the end of the day, win, lose, or draw, the same way I felt about you four years ago when we first started this all in, I'm going to feel the same way four years from now, eight years from now, a hundred years from now, I'm going to feel the same way about you. Because we love y'all. I hope y'all understand that. I hope you understand that we care about y'all so much that we remember the little details about you in every point of your life when we first meet you. I get the chance to impact so many lives. These kids mean like, like they mean the world to me, seriously. My seniors, all my freshmen that I came in with when I got the job. I mean, they are so just good all around kids. We, we listened and we followed direction, the right direction, the right path. And it's all about your character, your beliefs, your goals, your attitude, how you're gonna persevere through things. It's who you are as a person. Jason's really big on us being united as a team and that uh, whatever we're feeling, we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna be open and, and vocal and feel comfortable. That locker room is a space that we can, we can talk about things. But whatever is going on in this country, this, this group of young men and this group of coaches, we're united. What we did at a game to express ourselves, we all locked arms with each other. And that's what we do here. We stay there until the JROTC gets off the field. Show respect to them. We're still all at one. We're not going to be divided at all. Well, with all that's going on, we're we going to make it through it. We're going to make it through it. I was trying to follow in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. The purpose that he has for me is not just changing um, the kids in the school, in the neighborhood. I want to help change the community. Because again, after you change the community, you can change a city. A city can change a region. A region change the state. State could change countries, right? So it could be a worldly thing just by starting with your part that you're doing now. I know this is gonna sound cliche and I said it like, I, I think I'm, I lived out my purpose. I'm living, um, I'm showing, I'm breathing, I'm eating, I'm sleeping, my purpose. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go!